Hi, it's Chris here from the EQ Mod Project. In this video tutorial, uh, we're going to look at EQ ASCOM and auto guiding. Now, there are two uh, basic ways in which auto guiding can be accomplished. Um, that's ST4 based guiding and ASCOM pulse guiding. Now, for ST4 type guiding, um, the auto guider port on the mount is used and auto guiding the auto guiding application uh, will command the mount directly um, through the uh, hardware um, connection on that auto guider uh, socket EQ ASCOM doesn't really play any part in the actual control if you're using ST4 guiding but what it can do um, is set the rate at which the mount will move when those auto guider signals are uh, present. You'll find these settings uh, in this part of the screen where it's, it says quite clearly auto guider port SD4 guide rate uh, and for right ascension declination there are four speeds that you can select. This is the equivalent of, of, of what you get on the SynScan uh, hand controller. Uh, and that's the only thing you, you do within EQASCOM for ST4 guiding. Um, when EQASCOM starts up each time, it remembers what settings you've previously put in here and will automatically put the mount to, uh, to move at those, those rates if the inputs are present on the uh, auto guider port. Okay, the other form of guiding is pulse guiding, or ASCOM pulse guiding. Um, I'm not a great fan of the term pulse guiding because ST4 guiding is also uh, guiding by, by pulses. Uh, but nonetheless, that's the accepted term nowadays. Uh, I always try to prefix it with the term ASCOM because in this context we're specifically talking about an ASCOM message that is sent to the driver uh, and the driver then changes the tracking rate uh, of the mount uh, to provide a correction now one thing I should say at the very beginning uh, when we talk about EQ ASCOM and pulse guiding is there is a setting in the driver setup that says whether pulse guide support is provided by EQ ASCOM. Uh, now for most people you can just leave this checked and you can uh, still guide via SD4 or pulse guide but there was one particular application uh, which whenever it connected to an ASCOM driver would check if pulse guide support was present and if it was uh, it would only ever guide using ASCOM pulse guiding uh, and this upset some people that, that wanted to use SD4 guiding so we had to put this checkbox in there uh, for most people you just need to make sure it's checked if you're going to use pulse guiding support and I believe that is the default but, but check it anyway ok going back to the uh, driver itself so the way pulse guiding works is a pulse guide message comes into EQASCOM and it has two parameters a, a duration uh, a duration of the pulse and a direction in which to move. EQ ASCOM then applies a uh, correction to the tracking rate um, for the, the period of that duration and the rate at which it, it, it adjusts the tracking rate by is, is specified by these um, sliders. Now for each axis you can disable guiding um, via these checkboxes. Obviously some guiding applications will also have their own options for 
declination guiding, but, but you can override that from the driver here if, 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 if you wish. Uh, and these sliders say what kind of adjustment is made to the tracking rate whilst a pulse is, is present. So if I set uh, the right ascension rate to 0.5 times sidereal, what that means is whenever uh, a, a pulse is actioned, uh, the mount will actually run at 1.5 times sidereal in one direction and a half times sidereal in the other. So th this is kind of adding or subtracting to the rate at which that axis was already moving. Uh, obviously for the declination axis this isn't normally moving so uh, if this was set at 0.5 then it would move at 0.5 times sidereal, sidereal I should say, in one direction and uh, the, the, the same rate in the other direction. My advice for these rates would be to set them as low as you can uh, and still get the guiding performance that you want. Uh, the reason for that is if you set them to very fast rates and you only have small errors to correct, your guiding application is, is going to specify very short durations. Um, EQASCOM has to measure and accurately time those and running under Windows it's it's not a real-time operating system uh, so very short durations are likely to be less accurate um, so it's it's probably a good idea to, to, to have these things as low. If, if you look at your periodic error correction curve uh, for your mount you'll probably find that it doesn't actually move that fast. The The rate of change of error isn't moving very fast at all. And you really don't need uh, fast uh, guiding rates to compensate for it. Uh, and, and a fast rate perhaps is, is, is likely to lead you to overshoot. Um, so I, I would advise to put these things to the lower end, half or below. This can give problems when you're calibrating uh, your your guiding application. Um, most application guiding applications will have a calibration routine whereby they attempt to move the mount, probably using a, a guiding pulse, uh, and they expect to see the star move a certain amount. Uh, if that doesn't happen, uh, some people's gut reaction is to increase the, the, the rate within EQASCOM. You really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, the calibration of your guiding application is really for it to learn about the characteristics of your mount, not to dictate them. Um, have a look at your guiding application. Uh, there is probably some means by which you can extend the pulse width that's being applied as part of calibration. Certainly in PhD that's the case, and it's called a calibration step, I believe. OK, moving on to the other controls here. There's a mon minimum pulse width slider. I think by default this is set to 50 milliseconds. Uh, and basically that's saying that uh, EQASCOM can't deliver anything less than a 50 millisecond pulse. Um, so if you tell it to go at 20 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds, it'll actually put out a 50 millisecond pulse. Um, you can wind that down to 20 milliseconds, and I, I operate this with 20 milliseconds quite happily. Um, the way it works is, if for instance we have it set on 20, uh, if a pulse comes in that is half this value or less, then EQASCOM won't even bother issuing a pulse. It's too small, it can't accurately time it. If it's uh, 10 seconds or more, in this particular case, it will issue a pulse of 20 seconds. Um, okay. Declination backlash. Uh, because the declination axis is likely to reverse uh, in movement, the right ascension is, is is not likely to do that. It's it's tracking at sidereal, and you're just moving either side of sidereal rate. 
but the declination axis can certainly uh, change direction when you're guiding. Uh, so backlash can be an issue. This slider here applies a, de a backlash in terms of milliseconds. So it basically extends the width of the guiding point uh, pulse that has been requested by a certain amount, by a number of milliseconds, uh, and that will occur whenever the direction has changed from the last pulse that was was actioned. And that's 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 the settings. There are some other advanced settings, um, but these are the the only ones that that most people need worry about at all. Okay. Now I'm going to start up a uh, another application. I'll just move that out of the way to demonstrate pulse guiding itself, which is a pulse guide test application. I'll just connect to this simulator. Now, EQ ASCOM has a pulse guide monitor display where there are two graphs, one for each axis. Um, which show you what pulse guiding commands have recently been received. So if I send a, uh, a pulse of 500 milliseconds to the west, we immediately get a message saying mount must be pulse guiding, uh, must be tracking for pulse guiding to work. So let's make it tracking, issue it again. And you see it's, it's shown on this graph. Uh, the y-axis is essentially showing the length of pulse. Um, the x-axis is just pulse events. So then this, you see I have a straight line because I'm always setting the same length. If I go east, we'll obviously get a line going up the other way. And the same works for north and south. If you see uh, constant changes in direction, like this. This this means that your mount is hunting around. You're you're effectively overcorrecting. Uh, so this can help diagnose how well your guiding is performing. If you see corrections always in the same direction, that means you have some drift in that particular in in the opposite direction. So if it's always correcting north, then clearly the the the, the, the mount is 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 moving south at a steady rate. Um, and again, it can help you diagnose things. It, it it doesn't mean to say that your guiding is, is, is being poor. It just means that there is some sort of drift that the guiding is correcting. You can zoom in uh, using these sliders. So if we make this a, a, a much smaller duration, you can see, because the pulses are smaller, it's it's moving quicker now. A little bit hard to see what's going there, so we could zoom in just to get a better resolution. The other control we have on here is the uh, gains, the, the, the RA width gains. This is a means by which you can dynamically adjust the strength of correction that's being applied. So if your guiding application has said I want you to correct uh, with a 500 millisecond pulse and you turn this gain down to 50%, what actually get apl gets applied is a 250 millisecond pulse. So it's a way in which you can adjust the strength of the guiding that's being applied. Some guiding applications don't allow you to change their own parameters whilst it's actively guiding. And by providing these sliders, we allow you to do it within the driver itself. For guiding calibration, always make sure these things start uh, are set to 100%. Okay, and that, that's essentially all there is to show you on, on, on the guiding itself. Uh, quite what values you need to set in your guiding application will depend on the equipment you've got, um, the imaging resolution and the guiding resolution and all, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a bit of a black art, I'm afraid, and uh, the only real way it, 
is to experiment and find what settings work best for you. Okay, that concludes this uh, tutorial.